Good afternoon and welcome to another edition of In-Depth School and Community, a topical program that looks at programs that we have here in the school and in the community. Uh, we want to feature our schools in these first couple of weeks. Uh, we did a show last week on talking about Concord High School and a, a school of opportunity. Today we're going to talk about student voice and I'm really thrilled with this particular show because that's one of the things we're really interested in here at Concord High School and really our other schools as well. That's where is the student voice and how much of a role do our students have in determining the future of our school and the kinds of things that we want to have for our students as we um, go through this educational process. So let's meet our distinguished guests here. Uh, we'll start with Akriti um, Baturai. Baturai, thank you. Uh, Akriti, tell us that you are, what year you are? I'm a junior this oh. year. Okay, great. We'll come back to you in a minute. Each, okay. each of these uh, students and our distinguished assistant principal have some really interesting stories. Mr. Herbert? Assistant principal, Tim Herbert at Concord High School. Okay, and? And I'm Neon Nepal, and I'm a junior at Concord High School. Terrific. So we'll start with you, Mr. Herbert. So just talk to us a little bit about, you know, student government, student voice, uh, opportunities for students to be in leadership positions mm -hmm. within the school. Currently at uh, Concord High School, we have, we have a vast uh, club co-curricular uh, programs as well as athletic programs that allow leadership. Uh -huh. uh, student Senate, one of our, our premier programs, uh, and they, they organize huge events and things such as the prom, uh, we have Varsity Club, which is, is a uh, athletic leadership type mm -hmm. club that organizes winter carnival and pep rallies and things like that. So student leadership around student activities ha and uh, driving what they want to experience, creating somewhat of a culture around is uh, uh, Student Senate and Varsity Club have done a lot in. In addition to that, we have um, our student athletic leadership groups uh -huh. and they participate in conferences where they learn le leadership skills bring that right. back to That's Concord good. High School and they try and work to uh, you know create some sort of a soft curriculum I would say that we adopt in our sports programs. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So Neonta talk to us about you know your role what do you specifically do in student senate and other leadership uh, opportunities in the school and and why that's important to you? So I am president of the junior class. So in terms of student government itself within my grade, uh -huh. I think a lot of our attention has gone towards obviously funding activities within our own grade. So right. senior gifts, senior prom, things like that. But uh -huh. this year as a Senate as a whole and also individually as the junior class, we've been trying to get more of a voice with administration and with the school board to try to address issues that we kind of think could be improved upon at Concord High School mainly. So, such as so one of one thing that we were talking about just this morning mm -hmm. at our meeting was um, how the juniors. I feel like we don't get as much exposure as we should to maybe like the financial aspects of college. So, if we could have college counselors come in and talk to us about what the college process looks like, how to fill out a FAFSA FAFSA application, and scholarships we can be looking out for, what tests we should be taking. Things you know, like that's that. an that's an interesting point, <clears throat> and, and Tim, you can help us out here. Yep. So. Um, you know, a lot of parents, me too, mm -hmm. <laughs> struggle with that issue about, you know, uh, what do, how do I get the FAFSA? Mm -hmm. How do I fill it out? Do, how would I know that if I'm going to qualify or not? Mm -hmm. um, how cumbersome a, a, an activity is it? Is it easy for me to follow? Um, these are all issues that parents have. And you're, I think Adianta's right. You know, we don't do enough of mm -hmm. um, counseling, if you will, mm -hmm. not so much for the student, because it's the parent yeah. really has to fill it out, yep. but to counseling for the parents in terms of, you know, how do I get a hold of financial aid? Now, yeah. this is actually brings up two points, Neonta. I'm glad you raised this. You have the FAFSA, which is one side of the mm -hmm. whole equation. The other side is what kinds of financial assistance the college itself has to offer. And then gaining access to that and realizing there are a variety of scholarships or, or opportunities that you may apply to to come, to come directly from the college as opposed to just FAFSA. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, I think those are important mm -hmm. considerations. And, and I know that uh, the guidance department, uh, the school council has organized a couple events throughout the year. But That's unfo great. Unfortunately for juniors, uh, I do believe it comes later in the second semester uh -huh. uh, towards the end of the school year, which listening to what Neonta is saying, it's, it sounds like there's a need prior to that for uh -huh. students to be made aware of that prior to you know, the end of the semester so they're not going in, into the first semester sure. senior year uneducated on that stuff so yeah that's something. I, I, well you know what else is important I think what you just said is not only do you have that but then you also have I got four or five classes I'm yep. taking as a senior right so I got to keep up with my studies mm -hmm. I got all this college stuff the application process in and of itself is difficult right Akriti mm -hmm. and so you got on you got that and then in addition to yep. the fact that you're looking at the FAFSA and all the other stuff so finding an opportunity to build all, all those, those things in in a meaningful way is difficult 
Mm -hmm. um, let's turn our attention to Akriti. So oh. talk to us about you know, what your role is in the school and what you'd like to see happen. So I am secretary of the junior class. And uh -huh. like Neonta said, we focus on, as like student government for our class, we focus on our prom and stuff. Mm -hmm. But for student senate, another thing that we talked about was the grading system. And recently we've like changed over to the competency. So this morning we were talking about how we would like to hear colleges um, perspective on that as a whole. That's great. So I just want to play with that idea a little mm -hmm. bit. I'm sure some of the parents out there also have lots of questions and concerns about the grading system and what it means in terms of college applications. But let's just pretend for a second that the college application process is a non-issue. Pretend that. How do you feel about the grading system in terms of your understanding of what it means for your competency and level of understanding, and then, perhaps more importantly, how your parents understand what all that means. <clears throat> Go ahead, we'll start with you, Nina. Um, so, me personally, I think that it's good in thought. I really like the idea that kids should be completely competent, and me personally, I like feeling like I've achieved a level of mastery for every single thing I've done, because the whole and knowledge will somehow come up somewhere in the future. But I think in terms of my parents and how they see my grades, what I may view as a three, meaning I have a couple gaps in my knowledge. Teachers think that I'm pretty competent, but like I'm not at a four yet. My parents see that as the 82. Something's not right. Yeah, they're like they're seeing it as an 82 in the grade book, or they're like, out of four, you got a three. Like that's still a three out of four. Like even if I feel like so in their in their head, what in their head they do the math, they say yeah. three out of four. What's that? Seventy five percent. Yeah. Right. Right. And I think that's just mainly my parents have very high expectations. But sure. A lot, I know a lot of kids who have high expectations for themselves too, uh -huh. and I feel like we're uh -huh. all having trouble kind of breaking away from that mold that we were right. in before. Uh, Tim, help us you, out with this. You bring up an interesting point. Uh, parents and their understanding of the grading system, do you think there is an, a need for us to do some more parent outreach and really get them to, to try and, and bring them up to where we are up to speed on <clears throat> competency-based grading and, and what we're trying to accomplish there and get them to understand the theory more? Yeah, I think that they should understand the theory more. And also, I think a lot of the teachers should maybe understand the theory more. Mm -hmm. Not because I, I think a lot of the teachers are trying to execute it to the best of their ability. Mm -hmm. But when there's inconsistency and I'm getting, like, fours in one class, whereas another class where I may be performing just as, like, I'm maybe trying just as hard or performing just as well, the teacher is grading, like, mm -hmm. a little bit lower just because in terms of what they think that's what they're supposed to be doing. So I think not only should my parents have a better understanding of what each of the grades mean, but they should understand why the teachers are grading the way that they are. Now, it's my understanding that this year, um, obviously teachers are working through the process mm -hmm. and in assigning grades in the zero through four um, competency areas. Yeah. But the actual grade that goes in the report card that's sent mm -hmm. to the colleges is still the old ABCD, so correct? It's, uh, it's a percentage. percentage through, well, you know, one, zero through 100. Okay. And uh, right mm -hmm. now we're living in a transition year where we're, com in, and it's not ideal. Right, but we're living. It is our reality. We're living in a transition year where we have a foot in the 100% world and we have a foot in the four-point world. Our hopes is to transition to that four-point world completely. Mm -hmm. But in the meantime, you you have a unfortunately a conversion uh, going on because right. you, you're you're trying to get students used to understanding the four, three, two, one. Sure. And in the meantime, we have a a uh, system. Our student information system doesn't take four, three, two, one. Right. It's a hundred percent. So right. Be, we're we're right now kind of trapped by a system. However, we are piloting a couple uh, programs to see for next year if mm -hmm. there would be you know viable solutions to that. So we can you know take right. our foot out of one side and go right. completely into the four point world. Right. Which right. would which um, and and that when we when we do do that, we will bring in you know colleges and sure. And, and stuff to speak, like a missions right. office to speak to the fact that, yeah. yeah, there may be some different transcripts that come through here, sure. but we can interpret what students are doing. Okay, good. Now, I, we, we, that's obviously a big issue, don't get me mm -hmm. wrong, but I'm also interested, and I think our folks out there are really interested in what student voice does for the school. Why is that so important? Isn't it just as easy for Mr. Herbert and I to say, Here's what you guys need to do. Here's your assignment. This is where you need to be at a certain point in time. And, you know, see you later. We're all set. Yeah. Um, so I think that the biggest reason why student voice is so important is because you, schools are designed to be around and based around a student's learning experience. And uh -huh. you're, you're not really going to get 
a student learning experience that's going to be valuable or remembered by the student if you don't have an environment where you feel like you're being listened to. In high school where you feel like you're taking up responsibilities uh -huh. and actually following through, I think that's the biggest thing because I've taken leadership positions and things like that. I mm -hmm. feel like I'm making the most out of my high school experience. Sure. And when teachers are listening to me and listening to my ideas and listening to what I have to share, I feel like I'm engaging in a life that's not only confined by the walls of Concord High School. Like I'm, I'm working on skills that are actually going to help me later on and I'm learning to advocate for myself and my peers. That's an excellent mm -hmm. point. Wow, that's great. Akriti? Yeah, I think the same thing. Um, I feel like as I go into college, I'm going to be living on my own and like for the past 12 years of my life, I've been living with my parents. Sure. Or 16 years of my life, I've been living with with my parents. What's the so. years you remember? <laughs> 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 um, but the sense of like responsibility and like having that in school rather than having a teacher tell me what to do every five seconds, I think being independent and like knowing what I'm supposed to do next or like what period I'm supposed to do sure. go to next is a really like viable thing and I should, it'll just prep me more and more. Sure. Excellent. Tim, what, what do you hope to see? Well, see, I'm starting to see uh, bits of it now uh, with our student school board reps. They they're, they they want to be active participants in discussions sure. around policies. They want to yeah. be they want to bring more than just oh we had a pep rally this week to the school board. They want to be you know um, they want to be a voice for the students here at Concord High School. I've seen them you know getting up doing announcements. They put together a video. They participate in gathering data for us. Right. Um, in addition to that, they've, they put their emails out there and ask students, if you have concerns, if you have things you would like us to bring forward mm. to administration, to, to the SAU, to the school board, we're your voice. It, so that's one area that I've seen really step up. In addition to that, Student Senate has expressed, we want to get more involved here at Concord High School. We want to have difficult discussions <clears throat> with administration and teachers and come to you know compromises as a group. We're the largest stakeholder body here at the student body. It's the largest point. stakeholder body here. Good it's point. The, the, yeah. the largest numbers and uh, they want to be part of that. And that's something that has, you know, the advisors for the Student Senate have been pretty, uh, they're, they're advocating heavily for. We think we have a structure that we may be able to work out in the near future to, to begin having that where the Student Senate is an active participant in some of the decision making here at Concord High School. Yeah, that'd be huge. I mean, I'm just thinking mm -hmm. out loud, but you know, hearing all three of you talk about this, it would be great at some point in the next six months to come before the school board and to talk about what are some of the significant changes uh, at Concord High School relative to student voice? And you know, what, what changes have you brought about? What have you helped to implement that allow your fellow students to have more pride, more ownership um, in their educational experience and, and more opportunities to engage in different kinds of activities and events. And I know the school has a lot to offer, don't, don't get me wrong, mm -hmm. but I think you also want to be able to say, well, what's in the best interest of our student body, the current group that we have in front of us, and, and how can we best facilitate that? And I think these conversations that you're having with administration are huge because the more that you can have that composite uh, discussion about what's in the best interest of the entire school. And as Mr. Mm -hmm. Herbert said, it's about the student body. You're the biggest stakeholder. Mm -hmm. So maybe we should listen <laughs> to what you have to say. Um, no, seriously, I think that would really be helpful. Now, Mr. Reardon's going to play a huge role in all of this, obviously. Mr. Herbert knows him quite well. I know mm -hmm. him well. You two don't, but I think you're going to absolutely love him. He's going to be a great addition, and he is a champion of student rights of student visibility, of student pride and ownership and who they are and what they bring to this place called school. So I think you're going to see that in spades. But I also think that, you know, having you just in a position where you're constantly thinking about these kinds of things and ways in which you can um, improve the life of the student body here mm -hmm. at Concord High School would be huge. Can you also talk to me in the answer a little bit about, because you mentioned it to me before the show, that you're involved in a lot of things, and what are those things and why are those important to you? So um, one thing I'm involved in that I'm pretty proud of myself is we have a club here at Concord High, and it's called SOC Club, and mm -hmm. it stands for Save Our Cold Kids, so we're trying to help with the homeless population. And wow. one of the big projects that we kind of started up last year at Concord High was the Care Closet. Mm. So we have kind of like a pantry here mm -hmm. at Concord High School with Neat. food. Yeah. And we have been trying to like get it back and started because after everything that happened last year, it kind yeah. of got like put aside. Sure. But we're in the efforts right now of trying to get it back up and running again. And it's where we essentially just give food to kids who are kind of relying on the free, um, free and reduced, yeah. yeah, free and reduced lunches here at Concord High. So we just try to send them home with food for the weekend so that they feel comfortable and like their school is helping them. 
That's huge. That's really great. I mean, obviously, it gives you a sense of fulfillment yeah. uh, and an opportunity that you're helping out, you know, your fellow mm -hmm. classmates. And obviously, it's a great thing for them because they're getting the benefit of that uh, outreach. Akriti? So I, outside of Concord High, I'm part of a mentor program called Friends Program, and it's mentoring a kid who's younger than you, um, minds in third grade, but just spending time with them and playing games and whatever they want to do, you just go along with them and do it. And apart from that, me and one of my friends recently started a club, and it's called SAD, and it's um, Students Alliance Against Diseases. We're kind of just like starting it up, but like it's to raise awareness for different sicknesses around Concord High School. And no kidding. Yeah. I'll hold that thought. Let's go back to the mentoring program for the young children. All right. So let's pretend Mr. Herbert's got a boy who's six or seven years old, mm -hmm. and you're going to be the mentor. What are you going to do for him? Well, so I would go in um, to the school that he goes to because it's a site-based okay, place good. Yep. after school for an hour, two hours, depending on uh -huh. the amount of time I can commit that particular day. Right. And I would just ask him, like, hi, like, what are you – how was your day today? Yeah, like, yeah. what what new stuff have you learned? And then from there, it goes on to like, what do you want to do? Like, do you want to draw? Like, play game a card game? Like, you're a connecting piece. Yes. You're a connecting piece. Mm -hmm. I get it. Wow, that's really nice. Now, the second program you said you're involved in. So, um, <coughs> Student <Excuse me>. Alliance <coughs> Against Diseases. Um, me and one of my friends, Cooper Lepard, we just started the club this year, and we're kind of just like start like starting to do stuff, but like. This month, we're raising awareness for breast cancer, and we're, we've wow. been like selling like breast cancer um, bracelets Great. last night at the parent teacher conferences. Uh -huh. But uh -huh. we're just um, bringing in money and then sending it out to different foundations. That's great. That's great. Uh, now, Tim, I, uh, you're aware of all these. Yep. Okay. And there's a lot of programs in yeah, there. Yeah, we have over <laughs> 50 uh, different co curricular clubs. Wow. Yeah. That's amazing. Now they're all being uh, run or coordinated by folks in the building, yeah, advisors, more or less. Yep. Yep, a majority of the advisors and our, our staff advisors. We have some uh, volunteers from outside of the school and whatnot that have participated in some of the clubs as advisors and whatnot. Mm -hmm. But uh, for the vast majority, it's teachers within our district. That's great. That's great. Now, I take it you two both feel very comfortable about approaching teachers, approaching administration, yeah. about, mm -hmm. gee, I've got an issue. Can you help me out? So there already is a connection, if you will, in terms of student to teacher to administrative interactions. Yeah, I think that right now it's one of those things where, especially because of everything that's happened, we've decided to make it more of a priority. I think in the past right. it mm -hmm. wasn't something that was as focused on, but I think now we're realizing that like it's something that we should all be valuing and we're all, even as a student body, administrators, teachers, we're all just trying to make it something that actually happens. Wow, that's really great. Mm -hmm. So you, you have actually recognized that as a major issue and done something about it in terms of trying to be more, I keep using the word connected, but uh, a part of uh, the school, uh, mm -hmm. the administration, uh, the faculty, and recognizing their feelings as well yeah. and trying to be a support system for them in a certain way. Mm -hmm. Is that right? Yeah. I think we're just taking responsibility for the fact that students are also a part of the school. So, like, mm -hmm. we have as much of a role to play as teachers <laughs> and as much of a role to play as administrators. The responsibility, as much as it falls on them, if we want a voice, we're the ones who have to say it. No, I couldn't mm -hmm. say it better myself. That's really terrific. Absolutely. Um, Tim, talk to us about, you know, where you think we're going to go from here. Right now, I think we're, where we want to go from here is, I think, administration and I say administration but the staff here at Concord High School as a whole teachers and and whatnot we've, we've experienced some big events in the past right and when you you experience that you get you do a little bit of soul searching you say why what am I doing here what did I come here for what did right. we come here for because we wanted to support students we wanted to watch them succeed we wanted to you know be part of something great in building our students up well said yeah. so when you know you come back this year, that's our focus. Mm -hmm. That's our focus. Let's reconnect with students. Let's re hit the reset button and let's right. build on this. So looking at some of our existing structures, such as Student Senate, and mm -hmm. how can we give them more of a participatory role yeah. in what we're doing? And Excellent. then you know some of the big decisions that we've been making, we've been you know reaching out to students, whether it's through focus groups or whether it's ga gathering information from them, and just asking. What are your thoughts on this? This mm -hmm. is potentially where we could go with this or this way. Give us some input. Mm -hmm. We've held uh, with our curriculum facilitators group. We, we're uh, the the uh, department leaders of the building. Uh -huh. They've had uh, focus groups with students talking about competency-based grading and yeah. you know understanding 
just to get a, a better idea of where we're at, where do we need to go, and, sure. and how, can we, how can we improve. So those are some of the areas. It's, it's an ongoing process. Yeah, who are we? Where are we going? How are we going to get yep. there? And, 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 and this student, student group, the, the largest stakeholder group, is going with us, and mm -hmm. they've got to be part of that process. Um, that's an ongoing process that we continue to have dialogue, and we, we're having the conversation with students, administration, and teachers. How do we get students more involved? And so right now, we're leveraging existing groups. We're having uh, forums, but we intend to grow from there. Excellent. Yeah. So, so Neonta, talk to me about, you know, what is it about Concord High School that you like? Well, you know, suppose Mr. Herbert had a magic uh, wand and he could say, I'm going to hit the wand, you can be anywhere you want in the entire United States. And you're probably going to say, I want to stay in Concord High School. <laughs> Why is that the case? So um, I think one thing that I do value about Concord High School, I've grown up in the school district my entire life. So uh -huh. I feel like, aside from comfort, I think that it gives me and a lot of my friends and individuals a place where we can kind of find our niche I don't think you're necessarily tied down to be with any certain group of people. You're not tied down to be in any certain like club or something. Like I was able to branch out so much my sophomore year mm -hmm. and try so many different things, and then I found what I liked. And I think I was so happy that I could also exercise a, like a level of leadership in those things too, because that's something I really wanted to do while I was in high school was show that I ha I can take responsibility and I can do things. And the school gave me a, a kind of an area where I could actually show that part of myself. That's great. That's really great. I create. Um, so in the past, I've talked to my friends at like different schools yeah. about um, classes that they have to offer at their high school. Uh -huh. And compared to Concord High, like it's nothing in other schools. Like I feel like I'm given such a choice in what I want to learn. And like I'm a very big like science person. So this year I've been able to hold on to like a bunch of science classes and kind of go in the direction that I really like rather than having someone tell me, oh, you have to take this class and that class. I have an option on what classes I want to take, and I really value that. Yeah, that's great. I mean, you both talked about this whole eclectic nature of the school, and so there's mm -hmm. all kinds of people here, just mm -hmm. all kinds. And so you have so many different choices you can go to. It's the, the group of friends that you have, the uh, participation in various clubs and, and activities, there'll be different people in all of those. It's not the same cast of characters for each one. So it gives you a chance to branch out and, again, better understand who you are and the kinds of things that you would like to do and to realize you know, what kind of future lays ahead of you in terms of the pursuits that you might have. Mm -hmm. So Mr. Herbert, we won't, we won't leave you out of this box either. Right. So you know, why, why do you like it here so much? Why do I like going to high school? <laughs> you know, um, it's, you know, it, it's many reasons. Uh, the community. Uh -huh. uh, this is a city, but this feels like a small community. That's great. You know, Explain. The connectedness. You have so many diverse groups within this school uh -huh. and it blends together and we're just the crimson tide yeah it's it's not it's not this group this this group of students that group of adults we are the crimson tide it's that sense of community that w we are one we've gone through things in the past we're resilient yep. students staff resilient and we're here for positive reasons outstanding and we're not going to let our past define us we're going to define who we are that's great. So that, and and that, that sentiment is throughout the uh, Concord High School community. That's wonderful. That's really great. That's a, a great testament to yeah. everybody in the school, not just the administration and the faculty, the students. It's the whole mm -hmm. kit and caboodle. Um, Neonta, I'm going to ask you a question. So um, based on the discussion we've just had here, and let's pretend that things go swimmingly well between now and June. So if you had to kind of cast into the future, right? You got your, your future eye looking to see where we're at. It's now June. Mm -hmm. What do you see at Concord High School that's different? So I'm hoping that yes. we see a bigger sense of community in terms of the students because I feel like, at, like Mr. Herbert said, there is a large sense of unity in terms of the school as a whole and the fact that we're moving forward. But I want to see more involvement from all the students together and not having this kind of like splits between grades and like a weird kind Good of... Good point. Good point. Yeah, just more of like a whole... Um, group of people who are just here and are trying to make the most of everything that Concord High has to offer. So like one of the things we wanted to do was like maybe a Memorial Day cookout towards the end of the year where it's free and anyone can go out there and just an events that allow kids at the school to feel like Concord High is one of those really peppy places where everyone can have fun in high school too and that is condoned by the school environment. Yeah, I might, if I have time I'll come back to that point. That's a really interesting point. Akriti? Um, so earlier this morning at our student government meeting, we were talking about the Memorial Day cookout. Yeah. And we were talking about how we want to see more school spirit from all the students because there's 
within the school it's broken down so some kids might like participate in like spirit week but like some people don't so we want more everyone to participate and like everyone to be happy that like they're there and like just be part of the school yeah you're saying the same thing i mean yeah. it's interesting because i i think that the key word that stuck out for me was you know fun mm -hmm. to be able to have fun and, and mr herbert you know both of he and i were, were classroom teachers and you know, we always looked at our job as a fun thing. It was always great to see what are the kids going to come up with in the class today mm -hmm. and what new kind of wrinkle can I put into my class that's going to engage them and excite them. So it was never like, oh, that's my job. It's 830. I got to be there. It was always about, oh, I can't wait to be there because it's going to be a really fun time in terms of what we do. And so for you to use that word and to see the school as a fun experience, I think is huge because mm -hmm. it changes the whole outlook. It's not like, well, I take five classes and I, I need to get my college applications going and I got to be at work at three o'clock and you know it, it chore related almost like you know that um, the, uh, the, the assembly line uh, motif where it's ba boom ba boom ba boom ba boom and now you finished everything and you move on to the next thing you're not mm -hmm. saying that what you're saying is this is a fun environment it's an exciting environment and I want to take the time to enjoy it mm -hmm. and I want my fellow students to also have that feeling of we're all here together and we can learn from each other and we can enjoy each other's company while we're learning along the way yeah. right mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. wow that's great that's great <laughs> now do you have personal ambitions in terms of colleges um, I, I'm not really sure yet <laughs> I think right now I'm I'm not someone who really thinks about that type of stuff as much. I, I want to try to focus on what I want to do more yeah. <laughs> before uh -huh. making a college decision because I want my college decision to kind of mold with what I see myself nice. doing in the future. Yeah. So currently I've just been focusing on my interests, what problems I think should be addressed, what things I could make an impact on outside of Concord High School, what I can work on while I'm here. Mm -hmm. <laughs> That's like great. That. Pretty? Um, I don't know either. I, I look into stuff but then I very, I just don't know what college I want to go to like it's one of those things where it's like here I'm here and I want to do the best in high school and then from there whatever happens happens so whatever college I get Gosh. into that, that, I mean that. that's just I wish I could freeze frame that I mean that's just absolutely brilliant what you just said so it, it's the moment it's mm -hmm. I, this is I'm here now I'm not going to project myself into the future and say well if I'm at this college and if I'm doing this no you're taking advantage of the here and now Mm -hmm. This is where I'm at, and this is where I need to concentrate my energies. Mm -hmm. When the time comes for that, I'll put that as a focus, but right now, that's not where I want to be. Mm -hmm. That's really, really mature, uh, good thinking. Wow, that's great. Uh, Mr. Herbert, we're, we're getting close to running out of time here. What final thoughts do you want to share with us? You know, a uh, student voice is something we're working on as a community. You know, administration, teachers, and students together trying to improve on it. Uh -huh. uh, it's something that's going to be an ongoing effort. Right. Uh, we're going to come up with some great things this year, and the end of the year will be different than it was when we started. It's, it doesn't stop there. It's just going gonna, gonna to be something that we continuously work to improve upon. And, and you know, in the end, there's going to be great things, great results from it. Well, I hope you're right, and I'm going to take you up on your, your suggestions and your forecast of where we're going to be um, come the end of the year. And so my goal is to kind of continue to keep the bug in your ear as I see you from time to time and to say so that June meeting in the school board's coming up pretty soon. <laughs> I hope you're ready to tell us what new things you have in place. Mm -hmm. I want to thank you all three for coming in. It's been very enlightening in terms of your perspective on the whole issue of student voice and where you'd like to see Concord High School go uh, in the future. So thank you all and we hope you tune in for our next show, In-Depth School and Community. Thank you and good afternoon.